Good happy Saturday evening and happy Halloween everyone. I'm Riley King and welcome to the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King network. We have a lot of news to get to this Saturday evening so let's begin. First up we begin with COVID-19 update. COVID-19 in New Hampshire, what you need to know. Let's take a look at that right now. And here is a look at that information for all of you right now. There are 10,884 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 9,015,262 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 482 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 777 number of people have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 229, 347 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. And now let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. In Nashua, 76. Let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. In Nashua, 1195. And now let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple. Daily new positive COVID-19 cases in the orange. New hospitalization and red deaths. Let's take a look at this chart here. Current cases in the purple. Total current COVID-19 cases and in the orange. Current hospitalization. Let's take a look at this chart here. Total cases in the purple, total positive COVID-19 cases, in the orange, total hospitalization, red deaths, and blue recovered. Let's take a look at this chart here. Positive PCR test rate and daily PCR test. Let's take a look at this chart here. Age group of cases, female and male of cases, and risk information. Let's take a look at this chart here. Infection. Hospitalizations and deaths. And let's take a look at this chart here. Deaths, percent of New Hampshire population, race slash ethnicity of cases, and hospitalizations. And a reminder, your common symptoms. Fever, lack of smell, cough, chills, difficult breathing, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. And we have an update on some breaking news that we brought you on the Riley King Network earlier this afternoon around 1 p.m. And here is our breaking news on the latest of the water main break that is happening in Raymond, New Hampshire. Water main break update at 3 p.m. The DPW crew has exposed the main and is in the process of dewatering the excavation. The exact of the break is not yet known. Those, the repair timeline is not yet defined. We are hopeful that water can be restored in a few hours. We will issue an update as more information is gathered. So stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of this up breaking news that is happening in Raymond, New Hampshire. Dover man accused of sexually assaulting girl multiple times over course of three years. Police say Lawrence knew the victim. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Bentley Chevrolet says now is the time to make it your own during Chevy Truck Month. Buy a new 2020 Chevy Equinox all-wheel drive SUV, just $22,184. And right now, a Dover man is charged with aggravated felonious sexual assault after police say he repeatedly sexually assaulted a female child over the course of three years. Police say 60-year-old Lawrence Pila knew the victim, who is now 15. He's scheduled to be arraigned tomorrow. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report.
New Hampshire Supreme Court rules Lori List not exempt from right to know law. Case moves to lower court to determine making List public involves invasion of privacy. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Now is the time to add another Chevy to your driveway at Bentley Chevrolet. Buy a new 2020 Chevy Silverado 4x4 LT Double Cab All-Star Edition pickup, nicely equipped, just $38,492. In a unanimous ruling, the state Supreme Court says the list containing names of New Hampshire police officers with credibility concerns, known as the Lori List, is not exempt from the state's right to know law. From here, the case moves back to the lower court to determine if making the list public would constitute invasion of privacy. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Dan Feltitz for governor, Democrat Dan Feltitz, who is running for governor, was in Keene, New Hampshire this afternoon for um, get out the vote for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. The entire Dem ticket, thanks to Elizabeth Warren for kicking off this get out the vote lit drop in Keene, New Hampshire this afternoon. Let's take a look at some photos. As you can see, it looks like a great crowd showed up for the event. As you can see, that's Dan Feltitz here and Elizabeth Warren from Massachusetts right there. Let's take a listen to this video. Okay, there you go. Elizabeth Warren kicking the crowd and getting the crowd ready for the head out to drop lecture for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And a reminder, voting day is this coming Tuesday. People will be going to the polls on Tuesday to vote. Any Custer was out and about today. Great to be in Nashua, she wrote, with Cindy talking to business owners. Our state is lifted by the strength of our communities, and it is so important we support our small and local businesses. She was out today talking with business owners in Nashua. Let's take a look at some photos. And a reminder, she is Annie Custer is running for re-election for um, her second congressional district. And she was in Nashua again. Out and about in Nashua. Candia Selectman reject deal to settle court fight over crab apple tree. Let's take a listen to this video in this report. Heiberg had hoped the board would sign the minute 
visitation agreement, which would have required her and her husband to hire a fourth tree at their own expense to prune the tree and remove any branches encroaching on Jane Drive. Selectmen apparently weren't satisfied with the deal and want the tree removed, and the hyper to pay the town's mounting legal bill. At this point, it's pure harassment, Hypers said Friday. The Hypers took legal action in January after the town complained about branches sticking out into the street and creating a hazard. Selectmen declared the tree a public nuisance and had threatened to remove it if the couple didn't trim it. The high birds have maintained that the tree's branches weren't a problem and questioned whether the road was public or private. Under the proposed agreement reached through meditation, the high birds who are representing themselves would have acknowledged that Jane Drive is a public roadway maintained by the town. We went into meditation and the lawyers for the town said we had all the rights and power to make an agreement, but the ask keeps changing from the town she said. Town attorney emailed the Hybers and the Meditor on October 28th to inform them that select men wouldn't go along with the settlement. The select board has reviewed the proposed settlement agreement and does not agree to the terms. Instead, the board would propose that the tree be removed and attorney fees be paid, he wrote in a message to the high birds. According to the attorney, calculations the town's attorney fees currently amount to 8656 The proposed settlement would have required the town to pick up its legal tab. If the Hybergs have a counter offer, I am happy to bring that to the board. Alternatively, we have a status report due late November and we should work on a motion to the court regarding trial county wrote. The Hyberg said it's likely the case is headed to trial. According to the Hyberg, S. Vidal tree expert already trimmed the tree earlier this year while performing maintenance work on the street. If the town had approved the settlement, the Hyberg would have hired Greg Jordan, a Rockingham County forestry from the University of New Hampshire Cooperative Extension for any pruning that needed to be done. He is inspected the tree in January and determined that it was healthy and that while some of the branches had begun to encroach on the road, he felt it posed minimal damage to the traveling public. Jordan did advise that some of the lower branches could be pruned to increase cleaner clearance for passing vehicles and pedestrians. And that does it for this news report right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for watching this news report. And have a great rest of your day. I'm Riley King, reporting live for the Riley King Network. Goodbye, everyone. Okay, and there you go on that report.
to con to Concord schools go remote due to COVID-19 cases. Let's take a listen to that video right now in that report. Two Concord schools go remote due to COVID-19 cases. Concord High School and Runlet Middle School will go back to all remote learning starting Monday after a student at each school tested positive for COVID-19. Interim Superintendent Kathleen Murphy said in a letter to families she opted to send both schools to remote learning as a precaution. The district's reopening plan prescribes a five-day closure for any school where a student is diagnosed with COVID-19. Murphy said both schools had required students to wear masks and were doing their best to keep students apart. State health officials will directly contact anyone who may have been in close contact with either student that is within six feet or more than a few minutes. Anyone who has been in close contact with either student is to get a COVID test and quarantine for two weeks. Remote learning at Runlet and Concord High starts Monday. There will be no classes Tuesday because of the election. Murphy reminded families and students will have remote school on Wednesday as the school is clean. Hybrid learning will resume Thursday and Friday, Murphy said. And that does it for this news report right here on the Riley King Network. I'm Riley King, and thank you for watching this news report. Goodbye, everyone. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this Saturday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for watching this Saturday evening edition. I hope you all have a great rest of your Saturday evening, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night and goodbye, everyone.